Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today we are going to discuss about the direct motion of Saturn which is happening in the nakshatra of Purva Shada from 18th or 17th of September 2019 and January next year it will enter the sign of Capricorn which is its own sign and just before entering Capricorn it will enter the first pada of Uttara Shada Nakshatra just before that by the end of this year and we will discuss about Saturn's transit into Capricorn later and Uttara Shada later on but today is the video on Saturn's direct motion on Purva Shada because Saturn is retrograde now and in the next 10 days it is almost going to be stationary which means from the perspective of the earth it will it appears as if it is not moving all right although saturn is always moving <laughs> so what this transit will bring in for us this direct motion of saturn and how to understand this today we will discuss about it and as usual most of the things which i will tell here will work on your individual horoscope depending on your dasha which i am telling again and again and again and your original horoscope which means your original saturn where your saturn is placed in your birth chart not in your transit and where is jupiter and where is venus because jupiter is the lord of the sign sagittarius and Venus is the lord of the nakshatra purva shada all right so depending on the placement of these three and your mahadasha antar dasha and pratyantar dasha in vimshottari your results will vary okay and once you know the results from your dashas then you can try to timeline the uh, timeline events using transits okay and we will see how to do that today and yes if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and if you want a consultation from me regarding your dashas or you are interested to know how this transit will affect you uh, your horoscope and your life areas then you can always go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him before and after this transit of course all right so what is purva shada nakshatra purva shada is a very interesting nakshatra see if you want to understand what purva shada is you have to you have to go a bit to the background because the story of ritrasur is there in the Srimad bhagavatam which is very strongly related to jeshta nakshatra okay and from Jeshta Nakshatra, we enter Mula Nakshatra, and from there we enter Purva Shada, and then we go to Uttara Shada. Okay, so we all know the story of Ritra, so that he was Chitraketu Maharaj in his past life, and he was a great uh, devotee of Lord Vishnu, he was a great, great, great personality, he had seen Lord Vishnu himself. Now personally in fact and uh, once he saw Lord Vishnu he was elevated to the Vidyadhara Loka that is a higher heavenly planetary realm it's even higher than Indra's position in fact so he was elevated and then later on due to his uh, very slight mistake of uh, commenting on Lord Shiva he was cursed by Mother Parvati that he will become a demon immediately Okay. And the Srimad Bhagavatam says that Chitraketu Maharaj was so powerful that he could have uh, nullified Mother Parvati's curse and he could have also counter-cursed Mother Parvati back. But he did not do so because he accepted the will of Lord Vishnu and his destiny and he did not go uh, against it. He did not protest there. Okay. Just like uh, Vidura from Mahabharata, he was not uh, eligible technically uh, to sit in the throne and he did not protest like Dhritarashtra or Duryodhan because they were also not qualified to sit in the throne but they tried to sit there by using devious means and by trying to kill the Pandavas. So these, these two characters, Vidura and 
Chitra Ketu, they are very big lessons for us to learn uh, at a human level and also at a spiritual level. They teach the quality of acceptance. Yes, whatever happens to you and the things that you cannot change, it's best to accept those things as it is. And then what happens? He becomes Vritra Asur in his next life, Chitra Ketu Maharaj. And then he goes to fight with Indra. That story is very long. Why he fights and why he takes birth, you know, Toshta, Rishi's story is there, Vishwarup is there. And then finally, because Indra kills him and Indra also kills Vitrasur, uh, Vishwarup, I mean, so he, he is faced with a terrible sin. The sin personified is running behind Indra and Indra is running, 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 running nowhere. He's not able to find shelter anywhere and finally he goes to the Mansarovar lake and then he does tapasya, very severe tapasya there. These stories are there in the Shrimad Bhagavatam very vividly. So if you want to read, then please read it okay. Then you will understand the energies of uh, the nakshatras, especially Jeshta and Mula. See what happens in Jeshta is, we, <clears throat> in Jeshta we commit the blunder, okay. Now, when I say we commit the blunder, I don't mean to say if you have moon in Jeshta, you will go and commit some blunder with your mother. I don't mean to say that, okay? But uh, what I'm trying to say is the energies of the nakshatras, I'm trying to describe how the energies function, okay? Now, what happens to you, that will depend on your individual chart. So, don't freak out, don't panic, don't go and commit suicide. If, if I tell you that, you know, in Jeshta, you will do some blunder. Don't worry, you will, you will, you, you will not kill anybody. Don't worry, I, I, I'm telling this to you. So, now what happened? In Jeshta, the blunder is done. And then in Mula, there is the, there is the sense of punishment. Okay, which means... In Mula, the good thing is we at least realize that we have committed a blunder. But the problem is in Jeshta, we don't realize because uh, Jeshta is like that moment when you do something wrong. You know, it's like you, you have just done it or you are just about to do or you are just doing it. <laughs> and in Mula, it's like, oh my God, what did I just do? That's terrible. That's Mula. <laughs> so if there are planets placed in Mula Nakshatra in your chart, when the dasha of those planets get activated, these kind of things you might uh, feel sometimes, okay, that, uh, for example, oh, I just did a mistake, or there is there is a sense of rectification which is there inside you, which you need to do, but you will be able to do it or not, or you will do that or not, that will depend on the lagnesh, where your lagna lot is placed, and where Ketu is placed, because that's the lord of Mula Nakshatra, Ketu, okay, so, what happens after you cross Mula Nakshatra? So, in Mula, what happens is you are being haunted by your uh, actions, okay? In Jeshtha, you are in that anxiety, okay, I have to do this and you have done something. And then in Mula, you realize the consequences of your actions. The sin personified is running behind Indra and uh, Indra is chasing, I mean, he's chasing Indra. So then what happens when Mula comes, you try to look for shelter everywhere. Like Indra is running to all the places, you know, the different planetary systems, but he's not finding shelter anywhere. Okay. And then what happens? Finally, when you enter Purvashada, then you find some shelter somewhere, okay? Which means, it does not mean that when you enter Purvashada, the, the problem is resolved. The problem is not resolved in Purvashada. The problem is resolved in Uttarashada. Always remember that. But Purvashada is the time where you find shelter and you do penance, tapasya, like Indra did, okay? And there are many versions to this story. Some say he did penance in some place. Some say he did in Mount Meru. Some say he did in the uh, Mansarovar Lake. Some say he, he did in some other place, okay? So, but the point here is the essence is that now is the time that we need to rectify the things that we have screwed up in the past, okay? So this means uh, the houses which Saturn rules in your chart, depending on your ascendant, not your moon sign, okay? Ascendant, Lagna, the first house, okay? 
depending on that so for example if you're a capricorn lagna then saturn is ruling your 10th house okay and saturn uh, sorry I, I mean uh, saturn is ruling your lagna if you're a capricorn or aquarius so that means for you these two ascendants your whole your entire life okay your your primary decisions of your life okay and uh, this will also matter uh, depending on your uh, for example which house is venus is ruling okay because venus is also the lord of the nakshatra so for capricorn as i said uh, venus is the 10th lord and the 5th lord okay and for aquarius is the 4th and the 9th so these houses will uh, come into play okay so but primarily it's the houses ruled by saturn okay so if you are a capricorn or if you are an aquarius then this is a very important transit for you because uh, depending on what the dasha is signifying now your lagnesh is going to be direct okay so now what does it mean when you say the planet is direct so i made a video on retrograde planets uh, recently and in that i said that retrograde means you are coming back to where you were once upon a time because you missed something and when the planet goes direct from retrograde then what happens you go with 10 times more the speed then you are going when the planet was just direct okay so april this year saturn went retrograde so imagine january february march april just visualize those four months what were you doing regard no, not just anything what the houses which saturn rules in your chart okay so for example if saturn is your 10th lord what were you doing in matters of your career or your name fame status were you trying to get a promotion what were you doing were you trying to uh, start something of your own anything of that sort if it is six thousand then specifically it is job okay or it could be some legal matter also so you know the uh, significations of the different houses so i don't need to uh, spoon feed everybody like you know like many people tell me why don't you make uh, for 12 ascendants you know so the problem is that's too much of spoon feeding and it also doesn't mean that if i tell you for capricorn this will happen that will happen with you okay because that depends on your chart and your dashas there are one twelfth of the world population is Capricorn, so one transit video cannot work for uh, all the one twelfth of the world population. Okay, so the point here is just check where which houses Saturn rules, and just see what were you doing during these months, January, February, March, and April. Okay, and in the end of April, just check what what did you redo again? Okay, so now whatever you left in april wherever you left now the journey will start from there which means now you will go very fast that is why it's like a royal road now there is no opposition okay and ketu is also conjunct saturn in sagittarius but ketu has separated okay because um, uh, and ketu is now quite uh, backwards and now saturn will be moving ahead so they will be separating even faster okay so but till the time in january till the time january 2020 comes where ketu will still be in uh, sagittarius with saturn so what can happen till january is till january the houses with saturn rules in your chart they can undergo a sense of confusion at a materialistic sense okay so till january even when saturn enters first pada of uttarasada in sagittarius but till january they will still be conjunct okay till cares till saturn enters capricorn second pada of uh, Pur uttarasada so till that time we need to understand that ketu is going to teach us some lessons okay so what lessons ketu will teach us now when i say lessons people think that oh i will die or somebody will be killed or you know i will lose my job or i'll have a divorce no it, it doesn't mean that it means that <clears throat> whenever ketu gets conjunct with any planet in transit what it does is for that amount of time okay it gives us a feeling as if that 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 area is not there in our life okay or how does it feel to stay without that area of our life so for example if saturn is your seventh lord okay 
which means you are either a Leo or, or a Cancer Lagna, okay, for these two. So then for these two, you, you could have felt that, for example, and again, this is this will work only if your dasha is signifying the second house seventh house or eleventh house okay you would have felt that maybe uh, there's some confusion regarding your marriage or should you get married or will you get married or when should you get married with whom should you get married this kind of confusion should, could be there and you could be thinking that should i get married or should i uh, uh, stay without getting married okay these kind of confusions could be there or if certain rules your uh, any of your kendras then or, or even then you know like the first fourth or tenth apart from the seven then also these things could be more prominent what you should be doing in some major area of your life because the kendras signify uh, the major areas of your life okay so that is what i wanted to say and now is the time that you make the good choices and also during that time the planets like uh, sun moon sun venus mercury mars they will be transiting uttar falguni nakshatra okay so as i made the video yesterday i timed uh, september as the most intelligent month so therefore it is also very important that uh, we make the right choices and now we go fast go ahead in the royal road of saturn okay now saturn is a slow moving planet we all know that but even then it is a royal road because now there is now saturn is direct and he exactly knows what to do he exactly knows where to go and depending on your dashas you will end up going somewhere everybody will go somewhere okay so where you will go how you will go when you will go with whom you will go, you will go alone or you will go with 10 people or maybe you just go to the Himalayas. <laughs> okay, so that will depend on your dashas and you can do some more research on Purva Shatta Nakshatra as it is known as the uh, winnowing basket which means you, you try to separate the good from the bad and uh, you try to separate uh, those things which give you fulfillment in the long run and which do not give you fulfillment in the long run Okay, and now is the time that we do penance and Saturn is also the Karaka for austerities and uh, penance and tapasya as they call it. Okay, so whichever house has Saturn rules in your chart if you can do some penance or chant some mantras that will be very good that will benefit you and it is like uh, rectifying your mistakes which you did in your past okay it's not necessary that you made a big blunder but you would have made some small mistakes okay now is the time you rectify those mistakes and if you did something if you did a mistake when saturn was retrograde so you know may june july august september these three four, these four five months then now is the time you rectify that mistake okay so if you uh, spoke badly to somebody now is the time that you uh, go and uh, ask forgiveness from that person and hopefully when Saturn goes direct maybe that person forgives you okay thank you very much for your patient hearing and as usual if you are new to the channel then uh, please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit then you can always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website for a consultation with me and if you like this video click the thumbs up and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you you must find him before saturn enters capricorn because saturn is in sagittarius which is the sign of spirituality okay thank you very much wish you all the best bye bye